When you think pirates, you think about giving presents. At least, Rez seems to think so, with their latest update called Festival of Giving. In this update, we get to play as Santa's little helper, delivering presents on the seas while fighting off new skeleton lords. We have a new tall tale in the form of the Maiden Voyage, Ashen Forts are added, and as always, we get some more quality of life improvements. But are these additions a welcome present, or should it stay wrapped under the Christmas tree? Let's find out! And if you like these update videos, or are interested in the other content on the channel, please consider subscribing. You won't miss out on future videos and it really helps out the channel at the same time. So let's start at the beginning, because new and old players can now experience the story of how their pirate actually arrived at the Sea of Thieves by doing the new Maiden Voyage. This voyage is considered a new Tall Tale and you can find the commendations for it in the Tall Tale page. Unlocking the commendations will also unlock some new cosmetics. And even though the commendations are quite simple, don't fret if you don't feel like doing them all in one sitting. All players can go back to this maiden voyage through the main menu whenever they want. In this maiden voyage, the pirate lord himself will guide you through some of the main mechanics of the game, while also providing a bit of story and lore. This all takes place on an island just outside the Sea of Thieves. This place also rewards those who want to explore it. The main appeal of this island is that you can learn the ropes without getting spawn killed. The downside being that my tips for noobs videos will now get less views. This maiden voyage is a great addition for new players but also older ones who are into the lore and story. It offers some great teases for stuff new players can expect in the game. And personally I think this is a great addition, but I also feel a bit sad that this was not my first experience with the game. If it was, I would probably be more into the lore of the game than I am now. All things considered, this is probably one of the better tutorial levels you will find in any game. Now let's go over the new Gift Seeker Voyages. Jim is still the main guy to see and you can buy these voyages from him. Skeletons have buried gifts all over the forts and these voyages will provide the maps to them. Just dig them all up to complete the voyage. Be aware, a skeleton lord will appear to challenge you and your crew. Upon defeat, it will drop a map leading to other gifts you can also dig up. Just don't die, because he won't respawn back if nobody is around anymore. Pirate Legends can buy a similar voyage where they will face two new skeleton lords. The rewards for this voyage are also a bit higher. And even though I talk about new skeleton lords, they are basically the same but with a different skin. Same same, but different, but still same. So, what can you do with these gifts you just dug up? Well, you can make a penis out of them. Well, I see, that's the scrot and that's the shaft. Alright, well done. Or you can give them to other players to turn in. Or, you know, be a real pirate and don't do that. But it is required if you want all the new accommodations. You gotta give 30 of them? Just have a look at your mercenary voyages page to look exactly what they are. I'm gonna, we're going we're to an alliance server for that crap. You can give your presents to the moss stranger who is waiting on Reaper's hideout in order to turn them in for the balloons. And fun fact, last update she was tinkering away with potions in Wanda's workshop, which makes me think she is actually the skeleton version of Wanda, Captain Warsmith. But I am probably wrong about this. During this update, she finally uses her voice a bit more. Talk to her if you want, just don't expect that much information. Sadly, Reaper's Hideout is not a new island, but one of the unmarked ones that now has a name to it and it will now appear on the map. Since all gifts need to be delivered to the same location, it can be a fun place to ambush unaware pirates. And since this is the festival of giving, I will just presume other pirates were already planning on giving me their loot and I just helped them by taking it off them a bit earlier. Uh, thank you, I guess. Um. Like usual, the voyages aren't that new, but offer enough of a spin to give a slightly different experience. Keep in mind, 
all gift seeker voyages and accommodations associated with them are time limited. Another new, but not really, addition to the seas are the ashen skeleton forts. These can be found by their red skull clouds on the horizon. It's pretty hard to miss, actually. Engaging with these forts will have you fight a wave of skeletons while also encountering ashen keymasters and ashen guardians before facing off against the skeleton lord. Opening the vault of these forts will also give you guaranteed ashen chests and gifts. So far, I've been able to do two of these forts, but it gave us only one ashen chest each time we opened the vault. Which is fine because we only found one key master during the waves. These forts will be a permanent addition to the game, even after this update. But didn't we have the ashen treasures update last month? Yes, we did, but they expanded them this time. There are now more accommodations to unlock, like defeating the new skeleton lords and finding the new tombs of power. The new tombs will unlock even more cosmetics to buy in the same way they did last update. Getting all 5 tombs of power will give you access to the new flintlock pistol. The previous tombs of curses can also still be found which can decrease the chance of getting the specific book you want. But if you keep at it you will surely unlock everything eventually. Except the Shroud of Ghost. That will never happen. Now let's have a look at the stuff they added to the Pirate Emporium. Beginning with the most controversial addition, the Crab Dab. And this just pisses me off, for obvious reasons. I get that Sea of Thieves is a non-serious pirate game, but this just goes a bit too far. It could also be that I'm probably too old for this shit. Either way, it pisses me off. So let's have a look at other stuff that also pisses me off. And that is overpriced seasonal cosmetics like the new weapons. Because nothing screams Christmas like a new pistol to murder your enemies. To be fair, they don't look half that bad, but it's just not for me. If you want to buy them, keep in mind they are time limited. I do like the new hide and sneak emotes. It's debatable if they will actually help you sneak, but if you plan to do it, why not do it proper? And be sure to visit the store because one of the four sneak emotes is actually free. And if you didn't know that because you don't watch the developer updates, you could subscribe to show your appreciation. Personally, I do not talk often on other ships because, well... I'm fat pirate. The storytelling bundle is also really cool if you want to have a more visual presentation while telling your crews about your awesome and skillful adventures you just happened to have when they were not around. And in the Bill's Red Persona bundle you can find a less serious, aka more drunk, approach to some existing emotes. We also have some new pet outfits, we have Kraken outfits and party legend outfits that only party legends can buy. And we have festival of giving outfits that are of course time limited. Some are cool and some suck, but you should really check that out for yourself. She looks adorable. And for once we don't have a new heritage ship cosmetic. And even though I'm way too poor to buy them, I always enjoy discussing them in my videos. Two of them are on sale however, but they are still way too expensive in my opinion. I again pulled my calculator and you get less than a 10% discount. And let's be honest, that's pretty bad for a discount. They did add a charity page where you can find the notable pet hunter sales. If you buy them, all the money spent will go directly to Special Effect, a charity organization that helps people with disabilities to be able to play and enjoy video games. Great cause, but it's really up to you if you want to buy the sales or not. Keep in mind, this is just the first since different charities will follow. And as always, let's look at some other noteworthy additions. Beginning with the new title screen, and I think it's nice that they took the effort to put the new logo on the title screen. Except they didn't, I used my own software to do that. Took me about 5 minutes. Little disappointed by that, but let's look at the changes they did put in. Like some new combat tweaks. When you wield your cutlass, there is now a little delay before you can use it. This is done because people were abusing the system to swing the cutlass faster. Not me of course, I would never do that. To balance this change, they also removed a bit of the delay between swings. 
To the left you see the old swings and to the right the new ones. This is nice and they also reduced the sword stun from 0.5 seconds to 0.2 seconds. And if you block successfully you won't get stunned at all. I believe these additions were needed but like always it takes some time to really judge if the new combat tweaks are welcome or not. A tweak that will start no debate is the fact that when being attacked the damage effect around the screen now identifies the direction from which the damage came from. This comes standard in most other games but it is a helpful little addition nonetheless. Collector's chest can now be sold to the Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls or Merchant Alliance giving you some extra gold and rep. Worthy to note, this also includes chests found during Tall Tales. When you kill Ashen Key Masters or Guardians, their maps will now have the potential to lead to gifts as well as keys and chests. Gifts can also be found washed on shores, which is nice. And thankfully the equipment glitch seems to be fixed for a lot of people. Sadly not for everyone, so if you're still experiencing it, hang on, they are working on it. I promise, I hope. Lightning will now hit players less frequent when they are in the storm. Although it sure doesn't feel like that. I just wish they removed the chance to get hit while you are fishing in the storm. Getting storm fishes is already hard enough, but it is still a welcome change. And puke can now also be used to put out fires. And I have no other comment to make about that. All of this just works. New cosmetics can be bought from Stitcher Gym. We now have some aristocrat clothing, which looks alright, some mercenary themed equipment, Stonewall Imperial clothing, and we can't forget about the Nightshine Parrot ship. And even though it is a reskin, it looks amazing, and I will definitely sail a lot with this ship. Hopefully without crashing. A new addition to the black market is the Bilge Red Archive, providing access to all previously released black market items. Following the initial release of items into the black market, they will then be moved in this archive. But if you want the discounted price, you should still buy them during the associated event. This archive means you won't miss out on exclusive items anymore. And this is great if you were away on holiday or are just new to the game. I do have one complaint. I think they went a bit too far with their reskinning of certain items. When the black market was first introduced, it meant that new players got a chance to buy reskin cosmetics from events they had missed. But now they are selling reskin stuff from items you could buy from regular shops, which goes against the initial purpose of the black market. Just put those reskin cosmetics in the regular shops as well and ask a decent price for it. That's just how I look at it. Something else that I want to address real quick is that a lot of people are asking for other cosmetic sets to be completed, but they don't. We know they can pump new cosmetics out really fast, dear god just look at the Pirate Emporium. And they reskin a lot of stuff we don't ask for, yet stuff we do ask for, like completing the ceremonial Admiral Ship cosmetics, they don't do. So come on Rare, throw us a bone and add them to the game already. And as always, if you want to read the entire list of gameplay tweaks and bug fixes, the link will be in the description of this video. So, is this new update a welcome present? Well, yeah, kinda. I just wanted more. <coughs> the new tutorial level is pretty great, but let's be fair, it's still a tutorial level. That's not enough to carry this update. And the voyages and ashen forts are built up from stuff already in the game. Stuff we already experienced. Yeah, it looks different, but it's not. Not really. Same, same, but different, but still same. But please keep in mind, the two previous updates were pretty big. And I am having fun with this update. And heck, I'm still having a lot of fun with the fire edition and Fort of the Damned from the previous updates so I don't really mind this one being a bit smaller. But like my girlfriend used to say, I do wish it was bigger. So that's my two cents on this update. I may not be the fastest with uploading videos, but I like to play the update a bit before I give my opinion. So if you appreciate that and want to help the channel out, please consider subscribing. 
Captain Blubber. I haven't heard of him. So thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the near end. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care. Oh, and they also changed the equipment icon for the cannonball for some reason. Yeah, that wasn't even in the patch notes, but they did it. Shower you with coconut cream pie